to see is a reaction video it is a video of opinion nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos my volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. All right, folks. By popular demand, I'm doing a Coral Blade Grotto reaction to someone named Dr. Barry. Uh, there is a couple folks in the comments field and also in live streams for the past week going on and on about this Dr. Barry. Some people, some folks even suggested, hey, Jason, why don't you hook up with Dr. Barry? No idea who Dr. Barry is. But because they were so persistent, I decided to check them out. And one of the viewers left a link to a video which I'm going to look at here. And then I'm also going to look at another video from a channel called the Glossa Channel. And it's all going to string together in a nice, neat little continuance of the evidence for you, the viewer, who are here to study correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar which is in a completely utterly different domain than common law because common law is adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction babble domain and that's what this dr barry is supposedly uh, a proponent of now, i don't know if dr barry i don't know if that's his first name or his last name now that I think about it, it might be his last name. But I asked the viewers who would bring him up, what's his last name? What's his full name? They would never tell me. They'd just say, Dr. Barry. As we can see right there, he is, I guess, in this picture. What is this uh, word? Lundov? Is that a lowercase l or a capital I? I can't tell. And that's another reason for the re why I, the casing style that I use, so that there is no mistaking between a lowercase l and an uppercase i, so on and so forth. That's why a lot of times I use all caps. And it also differentiates between the land, the jurisdiction or domain of the living and of the dead. But that's something completely out of the realm of this particular discussion um so here we go the main okay let's read the main purpose of the channel the main purpose of this channel is to help people in relation to natural medicine and help bring awareness how our government control how our government control its citizens and to help people understand the system what would life be like without some fun so let's put something to giggle about I wonder if this individual's first language is English because that's a very poor uh, example of adverb verb adjective pronoun plain simple English so let's move on to the video that actually was shared to me in the comments field of my channel about what we call the common law ID which is an adjective pronoun common hyphen law is a compound adjective and an ID or id is a pronoun you see this id I guess what they're doing is they're asking us to assume that ID stands for identity if you use it 
in because everything is contract folks if you're using it in a com communication where you're, if I write down this particular word I I'm not here to be misunderstood or to misunderstand anybody I know they mean identification I know that that's what they mean if they mean what they say and say what they mean that's what ID means but that is not a correct punctuation not even in a fiction babble sense it is not think about it folks like really get down to it and think of it. if language and grammar is so important if it's so important that we really specify what we're talking about then this is complete and utter BS using something like this because ID if it is to be a correct even in the fiction okay I'm talking fiction plain English babble which I went to school to be an English major back in the 90s so I do have a little bit of knowledge of what I'm talking about here a correct abbreviation is I period D period but even that is not correct because hypothetically when you abbreviate something to shorten it for convenience sake each letter followed by a period represents one word in a series of words such as C I A Central Intelligence Agency C period I period A period for an example that is a correct in the fiction sense abbreviation this is not because identity is one word so if you're going to abbreviate identity then using those rules it would be I period and that's it but how would the hell would you know what that meant yes people may say oh you're nitpicking here no either the rules are applied across the board or not at all all or nothing in this sense folks and that's this uh, what we could call the squeamishness or the slipperiness of the fiction system is crap like this and common law uses it perfect example right here and that's why I say common law is 100% fiction system domain ah, I digress so let's get into it all right let's watch this short video with dr. Barry Let me turn this up. Dr. Barry, London News, a very, very that short is an video and interesting mustache style. I must say, I must ask you a question. Guten Tag. When you're asked for identification, you produce your driving license and all the material that belongs to the system. So You've contracted the common log ID card, little plastic card here. It's, it's your photograph. You can put down your family crest if you have one, not necessarily your date of birth, your address. And at the end, uh, I'll put a photograph up. There's a barcode and that goes with you forever. It, it comes out in a registered envelope and you keep that forever. You actually use that barcode to put on property because it's yours. There's no other barcode. There's only one off. At the back, it just says you stand on the common law. I will put a photograph at the end up and the address up here where you can obtain that card. And all the information on ID is on the common law website. Folks, I followed the continuance of the evidence to this website, Common Law Court International Australia. Adjective, 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 pronoun. <sighs> ID cards. Why get an ID card? All men and women are, by nature, free and independent and have certain inalienable rights, among which, wouldn't you rather use amongst? Just asking. Which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty. Liberty, folks, one of the most poison fiction terms you can have. Liberty just basically means permission to leave a vessel for a finite amount of time but you got to come back to the vessel with which you got permission to leave so you could call it a slave term if you want to they use it 
acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and seeking and obtaining happiness and safety. Exercise those rights now. Because if you have rights, and rights come from an authoritarian construct, and common law is part of the authoritarian construct, common law folks are authoritarian followers, if you don't exercise the rights, then they will atrophy. But if you exercise the rights, then they will be in hypertrophy and they will grow, right? That's basic kinesiology. I stand under common law. What is this? For this claim is with the knowledge is with, oh my gosh, this is very familiar to me. One of the people that commented on my channel copy and pasted this into the comments field. For this claim is with the knowledge is with the truth. <laughs> the fact. This contract are with the claim. This contract are with the claim. Folks, even if you don't know anything about correct sentence structure, but you know a little bit about plain simple English, you know that that is shit grammar. Either which way. Either which way. Uh, but again, folks, I'm not here to uh, make fun of these people. All right. If this works for them, if this has gotten them successes, if this has stopped the bureaucratic trespass for them, more power to them. Awesome. I applaud them. Great. Do your thing. If I'm looking at this from a correct sentence structure lens, which, which I am, then this looks like a joke to me. It really does. It looks like a terrible joke that's probably only funny to me, but not funny to the folks who spent money on this, probably. Look at this. Colon John hyphen Michael with a lowercase m, violation of rule one, rule equal. So they have a punctuated name that's not even correct. And then you have everything else in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Uh, 60 bucks. That is correct. 60 bucks for this shite grammar piece of kit. At least it doesn't have the correct sentence structure flag on it. At least there's that. If this is what floats your boat, folks, if this helps you, if this helps you stop bureaucratic trespass, if this helps you to get the fiction system to leave you alone, to stop harassing you, more power to you. Go to it. Have fun. But for me, from my position as a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar tutor of six plus years, this is a bunch of bullshit in the context of what I do. Uh, let's look at some comments here on this video. Uh, someone named the chief hyphen post hyphen master hyphen general says, ha ha ha, what a load of nonsense. And then Dr. Barry responds, chief postmaster, LOL. Chief postmaster says, the that's correct. At the Universal Postal Union's Federal Communications Agency. And then uh, Dr. Barry responds, no problem if you are happy. I got to take my hat off to Dr. Barry for his poise and his response there. Whatever makes you happy. And that's pretty much the attitude I have towards Dr. Barry. Whatever makes him happy. Um, if this makes him happy using this mishmash of grammar and participating with the fiction system using common law that's completely up to him another viewer said that these folks this particular group the common law court international australia um they were the ones that put out a channel called the glossa channel and they have uh, a form of the live life claim supposedly the next piece I'm about to show you, I was hesitant to put this up here, but it's been a few years since I've spoken to the gentleman that's going to be in the video, 
and and I feel it's okay to, to put it up there. I want to preface this by saying my volition is I don't mean anyone in this video any harm by the words that come out of my mouth. The words that are going to come out of my mouth are going to be through the lens of correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar looking at what it is they're saying. Let me set this up for you folks. There's an individual being interviewed in this video. This individual from my personal experience because in the past I have I did communicate with this individual quite frequently quite frequently once upon a time but then we stopped communicating because we had a parting of the of the ways because of our different positions regarding a few different things but this individual is let's put it this way their story their life story is one of success from my personal perception one of hardship one of overcoming massive obstacles and challenges to stay alive even traveling from South Africa to New Zealand to Australia I got to know the individual actually fairly well um, this individual wants to help people that's their volition they've set up many different um, avenues to do so because they feel like they you know everyone should be able to be free and unencumbered as they say they have actually tested the fiction system they have actually fought with the fiction system they were put through trials and tribulations by the fiction system they were watched they were spied upon they were harassed they were assaulted by the fiction system they been through the ringer folks so I have much honor for this individual and grace when this video was made which was about five years ago uh, what's it say when was it published May 2nd <clears throat> 2019 this video was published they went by the name of Cobus K O B U S. These days, well, at least the last time I spoke with them, they go by the name of Corbus with a C, C O R B U S. But back then, they were named Cobus with a capital K. All right, and this is them speaking about a live life claim to the Glossa channel, which some of my viewers have said that this Dr. Barry that we were looking at earlier with the with the mustache Dr. Barry ran this channel I don't know if that's true or not uh, but here we are and this is the connection because these individuals that were commenting on my channel were trying to tell me that Dr. Barry and this common law court of Australia use correct sentence structure but as I've shown you multiple times in this video so far they don't know jack shit about correct sentence structure none of it's correct at all and i have a feeling putting two and two together just to guess that they learned what they know from this man that's going to be in this video and as many good things as i can say about corvus one thing i can say with absolute 100 percent certainty is they don't have closure on correct sentence structure communication partially syntax grammar they don't know how to use it they don't know how to syntax uh, but yet here they are sharing this whatever they do know with this Dr. Barry allegedly or the Glossa channel and those folks Dr. Barry and the Glossa channel decided to base their concept of the live life claim and their concept of quantum grammar on the words of an individual who did not have closure on the grammar not not even 50 percent closure on the grammar so there you go that that in and of itself can tell you a few things about the mindset of Dr. Barry and the group of folks that that uh, are around him if they're gonna take something like this and then use it without having closure on it what does that say about that but let's let's get into it let's hear what Corbus has to say so we've discovered that the format or the manner in which a person's name, an individual's name, is written is crucial or critical to identifying who that person is. Yes, that's correct. Now, you have some methodology or some process or procedure 
for what would you say recreating reclaiming a person's true identity yes and that is live the document life, you refer to as the live life claim that's correct like i said if you don't claim your own life someone else will it's as simple as that if you don't have a claim to something someone else will take it from you in other words if you've got a very cute little dog like a little maltese poodle and you don't have a title to it and you don't have the the proof of ownership to it. I will claim it from you and I will actually get a court to give it to me, although it's your dog. You see, because we live in a commercial world where everything is on documents and on pieces of paper. So if you don't claim your poodle and you don't get the title deeds to it and you hold it and you own it, the dog is actually not yours as far as I'm concerned, if I want to take it. And this is what they do to all of us. It's uh, if you can't prove that you own something, or that something is yours. What, what are you going to do about it? You know, somebody just took your dog. Now, are you going to, once I've taken your dog, how are you going to prove that it's yours? Because so, I've now got it. And then in commerce and in law, they go with this bullshit that, you know, uh, ownership is 80% is or 90% of, of, of property or blah, blah, blah. You know, there's all sorts of things that's connotated to it in terms of commercial transactions and universal commercial codes. But in reality, we all know that what is yours is yours, but in the world we're living in, you need to be able to protect yourself and, and remove yourself out of the jurisdiction of... It's been a few years since I viewed this video, folks. And I gotta say, I miss this guy. I miss talking to this guy. I really do. I really liked Corvus. How articulate he is. What he just said there is 100% on the money. 100% on the money in a fiction sense from a adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction babble standpoint in the fiction system the maritime system what he said is 100% accurate very well articulated you might want to go back and listen to it again when you move to correct sentence structure it takes you out of what he's talking about all right. Now, if you want to, you can use the word ownership as far as owning a life. Myself, personally, I find that the very concept of owning life to be repugnant. To own another human or own another living creature is repugnant to me. You may feel differently. I'm not here to judge you. I'm just telling you, sharing with you my viewpoint on it so what he articulated about the live life claim is true from a fiction standpoint where he sits because he is super 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 duper knowledgeable about common law and fiction and the courts and the way they do things and how they can take something from you like he just said if you don't have a title to it with correct sentence structure it takes you out of that all right it's a completely different psychology now the live life claim let me give you an example to show you where I'm coming from this right here what you see here is the outside of me you can't see my brain you can't see my consciousness you can't see my thoughts at least I don't think you can I'm not I don't want to assume for you you might be a mind reader you might be a draconian reptilian I don't know what the hell you are when you're watching me but you get the point right this flesh that you see in front of you I didn't create this vessel. I didn't create this body. Even my parents didn't create it. My parents facilitated it, but they did not actually create it. They did not actually go into a laboratory or a kitchen and say, okay, uh, we want to give Jason this uh, gray beard here, and we want to give him this short hair and uh, hazel eyes, and we want him to be six foot, and we want him to be a little bit over 200 pounds. They, they didn't do any of that. They had no idea what they were going to get. They just facilitated what happened. There was something else at work there. So because I did not create this, I don't claim ownership of it. I don't own this. I'm a steward of this. I treat it as if it were my own, but it is not my own. And folks, when you don't own something, nothing can be taken away from you. 
If you don't claim ownership of anything, if you have that in your head that you don't own anything, nothing can be taken from you. What can they do to you? It's a very subtle psychological condition to state that very few folks can actually wrap their minds around. But it's the psychological position that I've taken over the years. Many thanks to Foucault on Raven uh, for introducing these, the bare basics of these concepts to me. And over time, time, I have developed them to make them my own. Uh, not as in I own them, but to develop them, to cultivate them into the concept of stewardship. So I don't own anything. However, my live life claim does exactly what he's talking about. As far as Aegis, A-E-G-I-S, or safety, or safeguarding the vessel, the biosphere, the vessel construct. But you don't owe any document whatsoever that's got your real name on it. It's an official document, and that's a contract. Now, a contract is an interesting thing, because a contract means it's got to be clear, it's got to be transparent, there must be nothing hidden in it, everybody must agree about it, must be correctly autographed. What are you talking about here? The autograph, uh, I mean, the contract, everything is contract, folks. Whether it's a eye-to-eye -eye contract and a nod, shake hands, or whether it's written, everything is contract. Every single thing is contract. As Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller used to say. Now he's saying it must be correctly autographed. That is only in the case of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Because the entire contract must be written with correct grammar. You can't write out an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, contract, and then autograph it and say, oh, that's correct. Because it's not. It is not correct. If you have an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, contract written out, using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, and then you put a punctuated name at the bottom, that doesn't mean anything. That just pretty much shows the, the cosmos that you don't know what you're talking about. Because that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make the contract correct if you autograph it. It just shows that you don't... It just shows that you need further study. Let's put it that way. The only way that you would take an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, contract, autograph it, and then have it be correct is if you commandeer that vessel, if you syntax it, all right, and then you produce, on one hand, you got the fiction one, on the other hand, you produce a correct one. That's the only way that it would be correct, is if you corrected it, if you commandeered it using postal mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, grammar mechanics. So, in a fiction sense, if you have a contract written in a fictitious conveyance of grammar, and then you sign it, sign it, which is perfectly fine in the fiction, because that's what we do in the fiction, it, it's not so much the signature, it's the volition. Because, folks, I'm sure you've seen some crazy signatures. It just scribble, just a scrawl. You can't even read it. And that's why usually they'll have a little line next to it saying full printed name because they want you to print the name so you can read it because you can't freaking read the signature. They do all sorts of tricks. All right. So keep in mind, he's speaking from a fiction point of view. Autographed. Disclosure. Disclosure. With no Dis closure. With all right. Keep in mind that. Corbus does not have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. So that is the position he's speaking from. And there must be witnesses. And then the contract is worthless if it hasn't been registered and it hasn't been recorded as a contract. And that should be the thing that worthless you Worthless in you the fiction the system. Okay. Again, he's talking from that viewpoint. Because who is he to say what something is worth and what it's not worth? Like, he can say that for his own documents, but he can't say it for mine or your documents, right? 
I mean, to him, he can say, well, your, your claim is worthless because you didn't register it. In his world, maybe that's the way it is. But in my world, if we have a contract and we don't register it, and it's you and I, and we have a trust account, and I trust you, you trust me, we don't need to register it. The only time you do that is if there's a certain unfamiliarity, to put it uh, one way. You know, if I don't know you, it's just sort of a, a surety you can put on it. Or as they say in the fiction, insurance, which means no surety. But again, uh, I might be going on too, I might be hammering this point too far into the ground here at this point. Uh, he's speaking from a fiction standpoint. Got your name on it with witnesses, written in the correct language, in the correct grammar, and that would be your live life claim, and that would become the number for your personal private. So I think I'm just going to stop it right there. So um, again, much honor to this guy. I miss this guy. I hope he's doing well. Corbus, if you're watching this, if your name is still Corbus, blessings to you and your family. Hope you're doing well. The whole point of this is the Dr. Barry, Glossa Channel, panel, whatever else, uh, Common Law Court of Australia. Folks, it's all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. Having said that, if you pay your money and you get your fiction common law ID or whatever it is you get from them and it works for you and it's successful and it keeps the fiction system from... Uh, trespassing upon you, causing harm upon you, more power to you. I wish you all the best. For me, I want nothing to do with anything like this because it is fiction system BS. It is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble BS. I don't want it, and I certainly don't need it because for six plus years, I've been perfectly fine, 100% successful using correct sentence structure. But I think people, and this is a guess on my part, I'm going to speculate here, folks. I think that a lot of folks find this interesting because they don't have to learn correct sentence structure to use this. Because they already know how to speak the fiction babble language, so they just use fiction babble, and they feel that this stuff is going to help them. Now... I found that personally with my problem with common law and UCC codes and all that stuff is that you have to keep studying. There's so much material that you have to learn and you have to continue to learn because the fiction system, because you're using fiction against fiction, the fiction constantly adjusts and modifies itself to fix the problems so that it always maintains the upper hand, which it will always maintain the upper hand because it has the bigger guns and clubs and it is the system that you're using. You are using the fiction system if you're using common law. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is completely 100% different, different domain where you are the authority of it. But people seem to prefer this type of stuff because on the surface it appears they don't have to do as much work because correct sentence structure takes a lot of commitment, dedication, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and work. And you really got to put yourself out there and very few people are willing to do that. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.